A-level business theories, Kaplan and Norton's balance scorecard. Robert Kaplan and David Norton were theorists working together in the States in the 1990s. Now, although they predate the TV program The Apprentice, whether it be the American, British, or any other franchise, they even surely would have been horrified by the single measure of success that's often used for profit. You see, each week, two teams would work against each other to see if they could win a task. Often that task was measured on how much profit they could make. This resulted in teams buying really cheap, low-quality source material and selling it for the highest potential prices, ultimately, therefore, making that profit. Of course, no customer come back to this business for a second day, and it's the biggest flaw of the whole system. However, that was their measure of success. It was not balanced on anything else other than profit. And as we know, real businesses need repeat customers to survive. This would never happen in reality, but it was okay for 48 hours of trading. Now, the balance scorecard does agree that financial performance is important. Certainly, the needs of shareholders need to be addressed. However, it brings in other measures of actually how well a business should decide if it's been successful. For example, internal processes, how well it's run internally, growth and learning, whether a business is moving forward and thinking about the future, and customers, how well are they meeting the needs of their customers. Now, all of this is measured with key performance indicators. And ultimately, if these all come out to be positive, then that measure of success means the business is actually being successful overall, not just on one area, but across all four. How does this work? Very simply, the balance scorecard starts from the mission, vision, overall corporate objectives of the company. From there, aims are set for each of these areas, the aims for growth and learning, customer perspective, internal processes, and financial performance. From there, strategies divide, they can measure success, and then ultimately decide whether any changes need to be made once this is reviewed against the objectives that were set. So what sorts of objectives? For internal processes, it's anything to do with the efficiency and operations of business, things that managers should be doing. So examples of objectives are shown here, maybe lowering labor turnover by 7%. Increasing capacity utilization by 10%. Any of these could be aims that are set and then judged to see if the business has been successful in terms of managing its internal processes. Financial performance, of course, profit is important, but also cash flow. Things such as gearing, how much debt the company has, and maybe even sales revenue. Again, these are just examples of what could be measured. Customer perspective, maybe setting targets for customer satisfaction rates, market share, customer retention, maybe the availability of stock or delivery times. In terms of growth and learning, it could be a number of things about looking forward and being innovative. So spending money on training, including staff ideas for Kaizen, developing new products, and generally spending on research and development. Ultimately, the balance scorecard means success is more than just financial. It's about all four areas contributing success for business. So that's the balance scorecard.